Glocks versus 1911s is the second stupidest gun argument on the internet. Now you can have a 1911 that takes Glock mags and that confuses everybody, but more importantly, you can have basically a fully custom gun delivered to your FFL for less than $2,000. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel, the only gun channel here on YouTube, dripping with that BDE, that's right, Big Dad Energy. If you taught your children to play the doorknob game so they'd stop breaking wind at the dinner table in front of your wife, then go ahead and hit that like button. I mean, what are they even teaching kids in schools these days? I'm David, and today we're talking about the Stealth Arms Platypus. So the Platypus, first and foremost, is an awesome name, and if you follow the channel, you'll know that when Sig Sauer released the P322, I suggested they name their pistol something more awesome like the Platypus. I have the perfect name for this pistol, the Sig Platypus. Since Sig dropped the ball on that one, somebody beat him to the punch, and now we have an actual gun called the Platypus. See? It says it right there on the frame. Regardless of who went first, I'm just glad that Perry the Platypus is being honored. A banjo playing platypus? Perry the banjo playing platypus? The premise of the gun is kind of simple. It is an aluminum 1911 that is a double stack and takes Glock mags. But the biggest disruption, in my opinion, is not the fact that it takes Glock mags, but the fact that they have a gun builder on their website where you can configure your pistol completely to your spec. There is a four and a quarter inch or a five inch model available. There's a bunch of different options and you can basically Cerakote every little small part, every color, there'll be more on that later. This one I paid for, I got zero special treatment. At the time I ordered it, it was quoted as a four week build time and it was basically exactly four weeks till when it was delivered. But now if you go and look, I think the wait time is either up to eight or 12 weeks. And I suspect a lot of that is guys ordering pistols and calling them up like, hey, I messed up. So if you're doing anything custom, especially in the gun space, like you're gonna have a really good idea and jump on it and then you're gonna think about it, sleep on it and you realize you screwed up, don't do that. Just iterate on a design and wait a few days. Like just keep looking at it until you decide there's nothing left that you wanna change. Show it to your friends and let them make fun of you for it. I did that and my friends made fun of me, but at the same time, they're not men of taste and I don't value their opinions. I'm just kidding, I love you guys. But they did give me crap because there's purple on my gun. The quality on the gun is actually very good and we'll dive deep on that here in a second, but it basically, there is sort of a threshold of quality that you can achieve with a well-made CNC 1911, like a Dan Wesson or something like that. And the fit is very reminiscent of that. There are zero MIM parts in the gun. They're making everything out of billet. So everything inside the gun is gonna be more or less squared away. The action of the gun of actually like racking the slide on the frame is like it's on ball bearings. It's very good. The quality level that you receive absolutely reflects the price point and probably then some. This is going to be very much sort of a first shot sort of review. There's only 500 rounds through this gun in two range sessions, only one of which I was able to film. But I'm very interested in this gun. I will be getting a holster and carrying it, shooting it more up past a thousand, and I'll give you some updates. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. But more importantly, watch the video all the way through because there's a giveaway in this video of this quick violent over uh, tactical QVO tactical holster later on in the video so you don't want to miss that so initially some of you are probably like that's an ugly pistol and first of all how dare you how dare you Second of all, this is exactly how I spec it out to come. Uh, they don't have like a standard build or anything like that. So what I've got here is a black slide with a midnight blue frame with these magenta infill on the grip panel. I've got the gray magwell with the racing stripe up through the mainspring housing, grip safety, and the manual safety and slide stop. So that was my kind of setup deal. I, I got them to do the stealth arms in two different colors. I got them to do the platypus in another color. But more importantly, as a tribute to our boy Agent P, I've got the orange and blue trigger right there. And interestingly enough, if you look down in the frame, you can see that the trigger bow is bright orange as well, which made me happy. This setup clearly is not going to be for everybody, but I really like how it looks and that's why it looks this way. A platypus plumber? Perry the platypus? So it's kind of the downside for a completely custom gun is that if you make it look crazy like I did, that you know if you ever decide you need to sell a gun, you're less likely to have people interested in buying it if you kind of go more aggressive and get something that makes you happy versus kind of right down the middle black or FDE or something like that. And the finish is entirely Cerakote. Cerakote is a decent finish, but it kind of flakes off and stuff like that. As we get a holster for it, we'll come back to it and see how it's holding up through the use of carry. A bunch of draws from 
the holster, all that kind of stuff. So be sure and subscribe for the update video. And I'll be doing a comparison video between the Platypus and eventually the Oracle Arms 2311 coming out later this year, as well as the Springfield Prodigy. So if you wanna see those, you gotta to subscribe to the channel. So the gun builder and how they're selling these guns to me is the most disruptive piece about this. It's no longer just a one size fits all, but they're trying kind of a more bespoke uh, gun making sort of process, which I think is really cool that they're trying something different. But that leaves the, is it any good? Is it reliable? And you probably haven't been thinking it, but I'm gonna talk to you about holsters as well. So starting with the, is the gun any good? This is gonna come down to sort of the design and the execution of the pistol and how the gun shoots. So first and foremost, while it has the 1911 grip angle, it is a standard 1911 grip angle. It actually feels like gripping a Glock across the front strap of it. It is kind of that two by four eased edge sort of feeling due to the fact that it takes Glock mags and that's kind of the way that they have to make it. And to that point, they even offer the finger grooves as an option on the frame in their store when they're selecting how to customize it. I went with the chain link pattern on the sides and front and back strap. The chain link pattern is cool looking. It provides pretty good grip on the front and back strap of the gun, but the grip panel on the side, it basically, it's, it, it looks cool. It doesn't, the traction's not super aggressive on the side. I wish there was more traction on the side, but ultimately because the geometry of the grip is so good, like the way that the mag well forces my hand up into the pistol, like it's forcing my hand up under the trigger guard, it's forcing my hand up under the beaver tail there. And everybody, if you haven't shot a single action gun, the correct way to shoot a single action gun is to let your thumb ride on the manual safety. Do not fold your thumb underneath it. That's how you create malfunctions. The manual safety is a small concealed carry single-sided affair. When I ordered the pistol, there was only the option for a single side and they have since offered the Ambi, which is what I would have ultimately chosen had it been available. The actuation of the safety is pretty positive. It doesn't take a ton of effort to go up or down, but it more or less stays in place. I haven't had any issues with it. The slide stop, slide release, whatever you like to call it, it is not a traditional slide stop based on the character of the gun. It's just not, you'll, you'll see what I mean when you go to take it down, you have to move the little hump in the slide to the back of the notch to get it to clear. It's not quite the same positioning as a standard 1911. It just takes a minute, you'll figure it out. The actual trigger is a very good three pound 1911 style trigger. It has very short take up and then it breaks and then the reset is a very short reset, a little bit of force to it. It's not a competition trigger, although they have since started adding that on their website as an option, but it does provide a ton of tactile feedback to where it feels like you really kind of have to put some heft into it to get it to break, which is good for kind of an all-rounder single action type gun. The trigger is very appropriately weighted. The trigger profile itself is a, there are three different options. I chose the curve profile, and I would say that this is probably a medium profile for other trigger shoes for 1911 style pistols. The trigger reach on it is basically perfect for my hand. I love the uh, serrations on the face as I'm able to get good control over the trigger. I suspect smaller handed people are going to have an issue with that and want a short 1911 trigger as an option as well. Now the slide work looks gorgeous. However, let's talk about it. Um, the serrations, they are very light at the top of the gun and they don't provide a lot of traction to actually manipulate the firearm. And the window cuts, while I think this is the coolest slide design that they have, the window cuts are basically exactly where you would do before the ejection port manipulations, which is what I like to do as a competitor shooter. It'd be cool if they had an option that was more performance oriented with, you know, aggressive serrations, but this looks really cool. You may have noticed that it is a bushing barrel. There are three options on the barrel. You can do like a nitride barrel, a matte stainless or a polished barrel, which is what you see here. It is a bushing barrel and the accuracy as a result is very, very good from the pistol. When I was zeroing the pistol, I was shooting clover leafs at 15 yards, which is all to the good. The front sight is a fiber optic sight, which is the correct sight. And there is a sight plate that comes installed on the gun with a Novak style rear uh, target rear, which is an amazing set of iron sights. And this is actually some pretty intelligent stuff with how they get the optics to make. These are direct milled optics. 
So what you end up doing, and I can't show you this because YouTube is twitchy on this kind of stuff, but if you take a punch and push down the firing pin, it is going to reveal a grub screw that is right there. You undo the grub screw and the sight plate will lift out. Then you can mount your sight directly into the sight cut but they're not done there. You may notice this little backup iron sight rear that comes on there. There are two posts on the sight, goes down into the slide, and it's secured by a screw. And the co-witness picture for this style of backup sight is actually very good. You don't notice it when you don't want to see it, but it's there when you need it, if you need it. So it's a pretty intelligent optic system that I was actually pretty impressed to see. Now the fit of the optic into the pocket, there is some daylight at the rear of the sight, but it has those little posts that go up into the optic body. You use the screws that they provide and it adds actually seems pretty solid. We'll touch on it in the reliability segment, but I actually had some bad reloads that caused the slide to lock up and I had to beat the slide apart using the optic face and the optic maintains zero, no problem. So the optic cut is a very good optic cut and it's kind of nice to see. That all said, the slide action of the slide on the frame is buttery, buttery smooth, especially when you get it. It feels like a very high-end gun. Now there is a small amount of wiggle at the rear of the slide which is standard for a production 1911 2011 that doesn't have like Nighthawk uh, levels of fitting from a gunsmith. But the result from that is the gun is reliable straight out of the box the first time you take it out. The gun came absolutely coated in whatever oil they had, which made it feel nice initially, but after shooting about 200 rounds, it started to feel kind of gummy. So I actually took it home after the first day, cleaned it up, and I used the Modern Spartan Systems Gun Care Kit, specifically accuracy oil. What do you make gun oil out of when snake oil's not slippery enough? Accuracy. I know it sounds cheesy, but accuracy oil has shown in my competition guns to hold up longer. It's what I use on my carry guns. It's what I use on my competition guns. If you want to save money on accuracy oil, you can use code THM10 at the link in the description. Moving on to how the gun actually shoots. If you haven't shot about a 30 ounce aluminum gun, then you'll know what I'm talking about. A roughly 20 something ounce polymer gun, when you shoot it, the frame deforms and it kind of absorbs in uh, your hand before dumping energy into your arm from recoil. Aluminum alloy frames don't do that. If you've shot like the P320AXG Pro, a P226, anything like that, a Beretta M9, any of these aluminum frame guns that are roughly the same weight, you'll know what I'm talking about. The recoil impulse is more direct. And so it feels a little stiff as far as recoil is concerned, but it's not unpleasant. I'm just an important distinction when you come from shooting like a polymer gripped 2011 to shooting an aluminum framed 1911, that's gonna be something that you notice. Now the recoil sensation is pleasant, but it's not that heavy a gun. It's only 27 and a half ounces on this bad boy unloaded with no magazine. So the end result is it's a little bit jumpy because it's a high bore axis gun, but good technique is absolutely able to stabilize it. I was pleased when I was shooting quickly that the precise trigger is able to yield good groups, both at speed and at distance, as well as when you're going for precision. The gun is absolutely pleasant to shoot. I enjoyed shooting it. I mean, I shot it a bunch, 500 rounds in two days is Plenty. When shooting the gun, there were two things that kind of stood out as far as improvements that I'd like to see in future iterations of this is more traction on the support side for more like enthusiast style guns so that we'll have a better weld from my support hand to help mitigate muzzle climb. But also there is a ledge kind of underneath the safety on each side. This is creating a hot spot. I can tell that I'm building a callus right there on my hand where it's rubbing and it's more obvious when you're shooting like plus P type loads. Ultimately, I was very pleased with how the gun shot. Like having the magwell at the bottom, it does force your hand sort of into position on the gun. So you don't really have an option but to grip the gun correctly and shoot well. So that was all to the good. One thing that I did notice is that with the mag funnel installed that the standard Glock mags, which this comes with two of them in a pretty awesome thorn and fire uh, range bag. Range bags are way more useful to me than those stupid plastic gun caboodles that most people sell their guns in. So I was really happy happy to see that. But the base pads on the OEM Glock mags go lower than flush, so there's not much to grab onto if you needed to strip mags. But more importantly, when you're trying to seat a mag on the slide forward, you have to really kind of get after it and hit it in really hard or download your mags by one round. An aluminum base pad that interfaces with this mag well would probably be welcome as far as I'm concerned. Now let's talk about reliability. So I'll tell you the story. I got on the range, I zeroed the optic, everything was going great. My buddies on the next bay came over. They each shot a mag through the gun to check it out and they thought it was pretty cool. And I said, yeah, well watch this. And I, you know, loaded up my mags and I'm using this certified bulk ammo that I got a real good deal on. And sometimes when you save money on ammo, you're not really saving money. What just happened? 
So what ended up happening is the gun ended up locking up because of this dodgy certified bulk ammo that I have. It happened a couple times where I had to beat the gun open. Out of 500 rounds, that sounds like a very bad failure rate, but I've had that ammo fail on like five or six other guns, not in exactly the same way, but just uh, anything that can go wrong with ammo, this certified bulk ammo has had. So I also shot some factory ammunition and surprise, surprise, it was 100% reliable with the factory ammunition. The factory ammo that I shot through, it was Hornady American Gunner Plus P124s, Winchester White Box 147s, which is pretty stoutly loaded, Magtech 115s and Tula 115s, just to kind of try a range of ammo and see how it went. American Gunner XTP 124 Plus P, JHPs. No problems there. Winchester white box 147s, let's see how we do. Smoky. This is Magtech 115s. And finally the, what is this, Tula 115s. The finest in steel cased ammunition. Oh, look at all that smoke. We just tore a hole in the ozone layer with all that smoke from the Tula. In all the factory ammo, it was 100% reliable, but I would stay away from kind of the bulk reloads. They're just. They're not the best. So like I said, stick around, subscribe to the channel, and I will be shooting more factory ammo through the thing to see if there are failures. And when I do an update, I'll report back on any issues that we had. So now let's talk about holster compatibility because this is gonna be one of the failure points on the gun right now at this moment in history, just because it's a new gun and there's not a lot of options available. You may notice that this has a square trigger guard, which is something I opted for. Most 1911s don't have square trigger guards. You may notice it is a commander length with a full length rail with uh, rail sections on it. Again, not a feature that is common on most 1911 pistols. As a result, if you get the commander length version, which is what this is, or the five inch version, you're gonna have a hard time finding holsters if those are the options you choose. They also offer the traditional rounded 1911 trigger guard and the shorter rail sections, both with the tack rail and with just the dust cover. If you go with those options, if you go with the standard 1911 trigger guard and the short rail, then you'll probably be able to find holsters with standard 1911 holsters. At that point, I ordered this uh, QVO tactical because the way he does his mold Molds for the 1911s, it accounts for a full length rail section. So I suspect it's going to fit, but I forgot which trigger guard I ordered and I ordered this round one. So I will be giving away this awesome $100 value QVO tactical holster. So if you're interested in this holster and look how awesome that would look if the gun actually fit in the holster. So if you're interested in this holster, all you have to do to enter the contest is it's only open to people in the United States. I'm not doing international shipping on the holster. All you have to do is to leave a comment on this video, just say holster, then whatever else you care to say. I'll do a random comment picker and get in touch and get this shipped out to you. But wait, there's more. Also included in the box is going to be this tracing of my hand that is going to symbolize a high five for winning the contest. So you can have that, you can chuckle at it, then throw it away and say that guy's dumb. Just like my wife did when I told her about the idea of including the tracing of my hand. I thought it was awesome though. Let's talk about the negatives on the pistol. Every pistol has some negatives and this one is not exempt from that because unless they're making a pistol exactly for me, then I can always find something to cry about because I'm excellent at complaining. So I don't fault them for the optic cuts that are available. The one thing that has impressed me the most about the Stealth Arms crew is that they are evolving the product rapidly rapidly, then bigger shops will not change the product like, you know, a couple months into launch, but they introduce new optic cuts. They introduce the double-sided safety. They introduce the option for triggers right there on the website. And that is pretty cool. So I suspect a lot of the customer feedback is getting incorporated. And if you're watching this in the future, there's probably way more options on the website. So that said, I would have preferred an ambi safety on the gun. The safeties are good. They have nice blending on them. They're not going to create 
create calluses for you. However, the little shelf, and this is the biggest gripe that I have on this pistol, this little shelf hotspot needs to be beveled in radius because like I'm de developing a callus right there from shooting it. It just, it's, it's not uncomfortable. It doesn't hurt necessarily. You're just aware of it when you're shooting the gun for longer range sessions. Another negative, and this would be probably one of the bigger ones, and this is a spec thing. They are using a two-piece guide rod. Now, when I took the gun apart to actually clean it, it is a very well-made two-piece guide rod, like a super duper high quality one. Like if you're gonna do a two-piece guide rod, this is a really, really good one. But the problem with two-piece guide rods is if you're shooting the gun a lot of extended range sessions, usually the Loctite that holds the two pieces together can become defeated and the thing will start to walk out because it's an alloy framed gun, it's gonna retain heat when you're shooting a lot. And that's exactly what happened with this two-piece guide rod. I caught it before it actually created issues where the guide rod was walking apart and what'll happen is the spring will bind up in there and cause the slide to stop moving. I was able to catch that before that became an issue, but going to a one piece guide rod with just a, a cap would probably be my preference, even though it's a pain in the butt to uh, put the little staple or Allen key or whatever in there to get the gun apart. The base pads, as we mentioned, the OEM base pads going less than flush on the uh, Magwell. I think the Magwell should come with base pads uh, with however many magazines they provide and the option to purchase more, just because the base pads need to become just, just proud of flush with the Magwell. The grip panels being a little slick on the sides, for people who are actually gonna carry this thing, it's probably gonna be preferred because it won't tear up your supple, smooth daddy stomach, but at the same time, for those of us who are pulling the guns out and actually shooting as like an enthusiast style gun, it'd be nice to have a more aggressive option. What I'd really like to see is like a applied sort of palm swell grip option like G10 or even brass potentially could be pretty, pretty cool. So the Platypus is a pretty awesome gun. Like the concept of it is sound. The gun itself is super high quality and I'm actually pretty jazzed about the thing. I think it would be cool if we could get it configured more in an enthusiast sort of set. So like IDPA carry optics or USPSA limited optics, which is now a thing. It'd be cool to have setups for that, which made this more optimized because the lightweight aluminum frame, you just, you want a gun that's a little bit heavier for that kind of sport. In IDPA, they'll even allow compensators. They offer threaded barrels as an option for this. So a first party compensator as an option would be also pretty cool. But really, I'm just kind of jazzed that Stealth Arms is doing what they're doing and trying something completely different. It's almost like a Bruno Mars song where it like, you feel like you've heard it before and it's familiar, but it's something brand new, so it makes it novel. And that's kind of where I land on the Stealth Arms pistol. I think it is a cool product. They're trying something new and the way that they're doing it is just really cool. And what I'm afraid of is that the lead times are gonna to continue to grow because this is a custom gun with crazy options on Cerakote. I just, I don't see how they're gonna keep wait times down as scale comes and finds them because I suspect scale will come and find them. My gamer bros who are looking at potentially using this in competition, you can probably do it right now, but I think a bull barrel may be in the work. I would get a bull barrel for it and if like grip options become available or something like that in the future, that might be all to the good as far as that is concerned. But you know, they're listening to feedback, so drop them a line, let them know, and maybe that could be something in like, I'd be happy to talk to them about building a competition model just because I think competition models are awesome and most general gun guys end up liking competition models for you know range guns and even home defense type stuff. So. so that's what I got for you guys. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you wanna see those comparison videos and because you're just a solid bro who likes helping other bros out and I appreciate that about you the most.